Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 48. 48. Tomas Hurdle. There you go. And at one point, Alexander Curlew. That's right. And he's he, one of my favorite players. He had several numbers. He had we, several numbers. I'm not going to go through them all. But uh, he was a player that I wished was going to come back from across the pond <laughs> after the lockout because I feel like the new NHL, yeah. the current NHL that we play in, is tailor-made for his game. And unfortunately, he did not come back. Is too bad. Well, in this episode, at least, we'll be talking about what the uh, St. Louis Blues did to win that last series that we had there, and then we're going to go a little bit of a series overview as well as talk about some of the injuries. Yep, and we're going to talk about some of the people that we could possibly resign. There you go, three big guys, and then we're going to do a lot of giveaways. Pretty much everything except this frame, <laughs> this frame, and that puck are going to be given away. And that stick, that's Joe's stick, right? He's not giving that away. So, you so, ready to start the show? Ready. Well, in the words of Elton John, I guess that's why they call it the blues. Oh, boo, boo. boo. Uh, apparently, one of the more hated uh, show openers by the folks on the show. <laughs> Awful. I thought it was clever. Not clever? You, you think everything is clever. It is, because I'm clever. What do you want from me? Uh, so, I guess first topic here, what did the Blues do uh, to to win this series? Now, I wanted to start, I wanted to lead with this uh, for one very specific reason, because <laughs> I imagine that there will be some Blues fans who have found us through the lives, and they want to go ahead and see you know, the next episode, they follow up a little bit, and I didn't want to start off with all the things that were going on with the Sharks, because, again, a lot of it, what we talk about are observations, and people from opposing teams see them as excuses so what i'm going to do right now is start sure. with what yeah. the blues did well so that opposing fans can get that and maybe feel hey these guys aren't so bad <laughs> right all right okay let's do it so i i'm for me what did the blues do so well i mean and i'm quoting letter kenny now for check back check paycheck boys i mean these guys came out and they were running up and down the ice in all three zones they did a phenomenal job of putting pressure on the sharks mm -hmm. again in all three zones uh, especially when the Sharks were trying to cross that blue line. You know, as soon as they got over there, you know, you see two blues, three blues swarming that puck, and it really limited the Sharks' ability to get into the zone, get set up, have good scoring chances. They got some scoring chances, don't get me wrong, but, I mean, some of the, the, the chances they were getting were not very high quality, and the ones that were high danger, uh, you know, they are clearing the pucks out. They were basically tenacious on the puck, and that's not really something that we saw out of the Sharks in this series, which was very unfortunate. We'll get into some of the reasons why that might have been, but we don't want to take anything away from St. Louis and the fact that they did play a very good game. They did come out and play, mm -hmm. you know, six solid games. Um, maybe game one, not so much, but for the series, they came out ready to play, chugging those legs, working together as a team. They did a phenomenal job, and I don't want to take anything away from them. Yeah, it's unfortunate the Sharks weren't able to they would at that point they would have to steal a game because mm -hmm. the Blues are playing so well, and not that the Sharks were they weren't being completely dominated. Um, I don't think I, I think the Sharks were still in most of the games mm -hmm. up until the very end, so um, it wasn't like there were any blowouts really. I mean, even the five to one at the end, one of those is an empty netter. The Sharks were really just pressing, trying to get something going, right. and couldn't get it going. And at that point, they were really hurting. So um, one of the other things is the Blues invested into the series. They were hitting and they were hitting hard. And we saw Vegas kind of try and do the same thing, um, and that series went to seven games. I think the Sharks kind of got banged up a little bit from that. Um, Colorado wasn't as heavy hitting, but um, you know you can't really recover when you're playing every other day for, gosh, how many uh, was that? Fourteen games in a row yeah. plus the six. <laughs> yeah. So they just they didn't really get a break. Mm -hmm. They didn't catch a break. And part of that is you know if they win games and they could close out a series earlier, they they could have. Um, gotten a break, but they didn't. But anyway, um, the hits in that series, uh, I thought it was actually going to be a little bit more tilted, but it was 208 to 182 hits, yeah. uh, Blues versus the Sharks. So, mm -hmm. eh, what, 26, 26 difference there? So, yeah, that's that's a decent amount of hits. You know, divided by six, it's an extra four, roughly, sure. four and a half hits per game. So, um, not that big of a difference. It felt like they were getting out hit 10 hits per game. Yeah. Um, so well, and the quality of the hits they were putting on, too. I'm sure, yeah. Right? It's a very subjective stat, and I imagine that when you go back and look at the tape again, the hits that the Blues are putting on are ones that are slamming us into the boards, as opposed to the ones that the Sharks are putting on, which are right. kind of like sliding into them. And a lot of times we saw the Sharks had the ability to throw a hit, and they weren't. 
Yeah. Um, that goes back to what we were talking about with investing in the series. Um, that the Blues did that. The Sharks yeah. really didn't. I, I think another key th- thing that the Blues did well is uh, they had depth scoring. Mm-hmm. I think their uh, their third and fourth line guys outperformed our third fourth line guys. I think um, you know they got some goals and contributions from those guys, and it, it obviously it paid off well. Right. Um, so I, yeah, I, I think uh, the Blues the Blues played well. They deserved to win. Sure. I don't think it was a case where the lesser team won and snuck out of a series kind of thing. I mm-hmm. think the better team is going to the finals, unfortunately. I think if the Sharks were healthy, and I think some of the Sharks had said this, um, if the Sharks were healthy, they would have gone, they would have beaten the Blues and gone to the finals, but they weren't, and that's probably one, that's one of the keys that we talk about for a successful Stanley Cup playoffs and a Stanley Cup win is you need depth, health, and luck. And it seemed like they had all three of those. Like you said, depth scoring, at they points, were healthy. At points they had it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, even when, when Dunn got knocked out, it, they mm-hmm. had uh, Gunnarsson, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, stepped in, played admirably. And, um, you know, they had the, the depth, they had the health, and, uh, you know, they got some puck luck here and there, which, hey, all teams do. It's not uh, a saying that they're not deserving. If you get a little bit lucky here and there, it's not saying that you're bad if you get a little lucky here and there. I mean, every team gets a little bit of luck now and then. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure... <laughs> Again, Blues fans watching would say, yeah, of course, your team got lucky too. So, um, <laughs> But uh, kind of rolling into the next point here, the whole like series overview. Now, you had just said that you didn't think that the Blues were the lesser team by any means. And to some extent, I agree. But I think on paper, I had always made the argument that I felt that the Sharks were the better team. Sure. Right? You can argue that all day, and that's easy to argue because there's no backing to it, really. Right? Yeah. It's not, it's, that's an arbitrary thing that you can argue. Yeah. Because and I will on paper it looks great. Yeah, <laughs> and I will argue that. That's fine. That uh, the Sharks were the better team still. Um, I don't know. Again, you, you take a look, and again on on paper, uh, it, they look like the better team to me. I think they had all the depth that they needed. And in terms of the blue line, I know some folks were telling me, well, the Blues have nine NHL defensemen. Well, that's great. You're going to dress six of them and play two at any one <laughs> point in time. So when I look at that way, I mean, I'd rather have you know the combination of Brent Burns. And it was Vlasic maybe at the time was playing yeah. with them, yeah. uh, along with Carlson and, say, Dylan mm-hmm. or whatever those pairings were. Most often, you're going to have you're gonna have to deal with Burns. You're going to have to deal with Vlasic. You're going to have to deal with Eric Carlson. If you're, Eric Carlson was, health, was healthy, that would be a much more dangerous thing to have to deal with. But you're going to have to deal with one of those three pretty much every single shift that you're out there. Now, yeah, you might have more depth with all six, but you don't have the talent that all uh, our top three guys have in terms of offense and in Mark, Wood- Mark Edward Vlasic's case, you know, defensive prowess. I don't think they match up. But in this series, they seem to do a much better job. And again, injuries and whatnot, we'll get to that in a bit. But mm-hmm. I, I, again, to me, on paper, they were the better team. And as I had discussed with someone else, they play uh, the game on a sheet of ice, unfortunately not a sheet of paper. <laughs> so... Um, it's, good. it's It's all too That's bad. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and going back to what we had said in the beginning of the season is we thought that the Blues were a very strong team in the Western Conference, most likely a team that would be in the Western Conference Finals mm-hmm. again. Um, and I think the beginning of this playoffs, I said that that's the kind of team that scares me if the Sharks were to get that far and right. they were playing against the Blues, more so than if they were playing Nashville or if they were playing Winnipeg, um, because Winnipeg was just struggling, which obviously they did, and Nashville, because they both lost in the first round. Mm -hmm. So um, St. Louis was the team that scared me because of that, because of their depth, because of their hot goalie, uh, because they scared me in the beginning of the season, couldn't put it together, and then did. So um, hats off to St. Louis, and and I'm happy for them for getting to the finals for the first time in, what, 49 years, I Mm -hmm. believe it is. Um, so those fans are long overdue for some hopeful playoffs or Stanley Cup success at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, one of the other keys here is uh, the special teams play. Sure. Um, let's see. The Sharks went two for 13 on the power play. Ouch. That's uh, 15.4%. <laughs> and for a team that was supposed to have a very strong power play right. with many weapons, uh, this looked like a Columbus Blue Jacket power play. Mm. It's just terrible. That, that shouldn't happen. Um, and I think at the end, we, we kept talking about when they need to put Bernsey in the slot. Right. Or not the slot, the, the Ovechkin oh, the office. 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 Yeah. Um, and for those that don't know what we're talking about, it's y- you sit Burns on the right-handed shot, and he's on the left-hand face-off circle. So if you're looking at the goal to the left side, he's sitting there with his stick wound up, ready to go, and they pass it to him, and he one-times it. So you get the goalie moving from left to his his left to right, trying to stop that pass and or that shot. And... Um, 
when they were doing it and getting the shot off, Bennington was stopping it, but he wasn't covering it. He was giving up fat rebounds, mm-hmm. and I, I believe there was one goal at least that came off of it where he stopped the shot and they got yeah. the rebound in. Yeah. But every time Burnsy got the shot off without it getting blocked and it got through to Bennington, he made the stop, but he didn't cover it up, and there, it was a dangerous chance. So I'm hoping next season the Sharks kind of capitalize on that more, right. make that a focal point of mm-hmm. their uh, power play. Um, now that they have LeBanc, it's pretty much a staple on there. Um, LeBanc, Burns, Couture, Hurdle, um, maybe another forward instead of Carlson. If Carlson's not back, I mean, right. we'll get into that at a much and different time. time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, my point my point being, I like that look of the power play better than, than what they were doing before. Yeah. So, um, and, and looking at St. Louis, they went 5 for 21, which is 23.8%. So the Sharks... I thought they did an okay job penalty kill, but obviously not good enough, and their their power play was definitely not good enough. Right. Um, and the Sharks, I mean, that just shows you the Sharks were less disciplined in the series, mm-hmm. which we don't normally see. We don't normally see the Sharks giving up more power plays than getting. So I think um, this series, the Sharks just kind of let let it get away from themselves. Uh, they didn't play their game as well as, they, as we have seen them play, um, partially because of injuries. Right. Partially because they're probably exhausted. Yeah. Um, but injuries. Let's, let's talk about the injuries. Well, we can, and I'll jump into that in a second. But before we do that, um, again, one of the things that we had separated between, you know, the, a good team or not, nah, I shouldn't say a good team and, and not so great. But why? The, one of the reasons that we thought that maybe the Sharks were uh, the better team between the two, uh, and we looked at the same thing with Carolina Hurricanes, right, mm-hmm. with the Corsi ratings, and it just kind of goes to show that you do have to throw stats out the window because the, both the Carolina Hurricanes and the San Jose Sharks had the highest Corsi ratings, right? Right, of, we'll, of any team. We'll put this up on the screen. You can see it right Okay, here. there you go. Yeah. yeah. So I- as you can see, they have the highest Corsi ratings of, of any of these teams, right? Right. Um, and it, it really didn't mean anything. No. It just, you know, it, they, they still got outscored, outchanced, out everything yep. um, by a team that was just hungrier. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's again, when you look at the on paper, um, it doesn't quite show you the amount of heart that guys bring. Not saying that the Sharks don't bring heart because in this series they absolutely did. But when the Blues are out there giving out, giving it their all to stifle uh, this team, the Sharks team, who, again, I feel is, was the better team, um, you know, it just goes to show how much hard work and blue-collar effort uh, goes into getting a win. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't just rely on your talent. You can't rely on the fact that you're the better, you know, Corsi numbers, right? You have better uh, chances for, you got better passing, or whatever the case is. You can't just rely on that. You have to go out there and, and execute, and that's exactly what the Blues did in this series. So, again... Um, being able to look at those advanced stats and everything, hey, that's great. And there's a, a lot of crowd, uh, a big crowd, a huge following that mm-hmm. likes to do those sorts of things. But it, it does kind of show you that at the end of the day, you got to throw that stuff out the window. None of that really matters. What matters is the guys that come out there and you know lace up their skates. I mean, let's look at Columbus, right? Columbus spanked, spanked. Uh, Tampa Bay, yeah. and I'm sure all of the stats said Tampa Bay was going to just absolutely <laughs> destroy <laughs> Columbus. So again, it's the it's the group that shows up. It's not the stats on the page, right? So there you go. Now jumping into the injuries, um, we wanted to talk a little bit. There was like four major guys that we wanted to kind of bring up. I think, yeah. Um, Pavelski, Joe was uh, was one of them. That there, was pretty obvious. Yeah, he. Um, gosh, he had. They said he looked like he was in a, a car accident when you look at the list of, of things that were wrong with him. So mm-hmm. obviously the mouth when he got hit in the puck in the in the in the face and the jaw, um, that was a huge injury for him. Kept him out of I think six or seven games straight. Um, and then after that, he had the what he had a knee injury. He had the head injury, obviously, from when he got uh, taken down there. Um, he what was had, the knee injury? I don't remember the. Knee I don't injury. remember there being a knee <laughs> injury. I'm sorry, the head injury was the one that kept him out for seven games, not the mouth. The mouth, he was right, right back. That was yeah. amazing job by the captain there. So yeah, the head injury he got uh, taken out. Uh, then there was a knee injury that he had, and that was actually what kept him out of Game Six against the Blues, a lower body injury. And then um, there was a hand injury as well. But they were saying the knee was the reason that he couldn't go. Not his head. Yeah, not his head. Um, he had taken a, a bit of a shot there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's what aggravated the that knee. That was in Game Five. Yeah, right? I think that's what aggravated the knee. But yeah. the the follow through. Was what everybody was upset about, uh, where I think it was Petrangelo, his, his elbow. Yeah, right? his elbow kind of got up around uh, in Pavelski's uh, head area there. If you look at the the hit, um, you can actually see Pavelski's head 
kind of behind Petrangelo. Um, it, it almost looks like it's just he disappears, but if you look over <laughs> his shoulder, you can see his head. So um, definitely he got he got his noggin rock there, but the problem with that hit was apparently uh, agitating his knee. So no. all in all, just a really bad uh, really bad health series yeah. for, for Joe Pavelski, not just yeah. the Blues, but uh, the whole playoff run. So uh, unfortunately, yeah, the captain really getting uh, banged up there. Also, Tomas Hurdle mm-hmm. with... Head injury. I guess that was the. They confirmed it. The hit from Barbashev uh, did hit him in the head. A lot of people saying, "Oh no, it didn't hit him." No, it hit him in the head, guys. Come on, just let's just call it what it is. Yeah. The other injury, though, uh, a pinky injury, yeah. which everyone's kind of like, "Ah, it's a pinky, whatever." Oh, he but broke it though. Yeah, it's a broken finger. I mean, that. How, what can you do to protect your finger in your glove? You can wrap it. You can't really put a cast on it because mm-hmm. then you can't get your finger in the glove. So you have to. I don't know. I don't know what you do. You, you have to get like one of those little splint things, I yeah. think, and then wrap that with tape. Maybe I, I don't know. Maybe get several splints. I don't know. Could what be. Do. Who knows? Anyway, you take the, one stick though off of like. Yeah. They know that your pinky's busted or sure. hurting, right? If they're going to keep hitting it. Right. This so, is this is the reason why they say upper, upper body <laughs> or lower body because they don't want the other team to know what it is and use it against you. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, you can get two minute slashing penalty, but if it, if a two minutes in the box takes out the well, other team's center. Right? Look at look at Hurdle's faceoff percentage. It and dropped. That was the funny thing. He was dominating the faceoff circle. Well, he actually said that he had that broken finger for a while, and that for some reason he was dominating still huh. in the faceoff. So he said he might have to try breaking it again <laughs> sometime. And yeah, jokingly, of course, right. but um, yeah. So you know, Hurdle dealing with again the head injury, and he had the the broken finger, uh, the pinky. I don't know exactly how long, but it was longer than just a game or two. It had been going for a while, yeah. and I guess he just got it fixed up. I think um, right in the off season here, so uh, he's getting that worked on, or he has had it worked on. But it was after Game Six anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Then we had Carlson with his groin injury. Yep. He reaggravated it, and to now it sounds a little bit more serious because he didn't rule out surgery. Mm-hmm. So he, he's not sure yet. He still has to go through the testing, but I have a feeling that it is going to be needed to be surgery mm-hmm. to be repaired. Um, part of the reason why he doesn't really want to discuss it is because he's going to be a UFA yep. and he's going to have teams call on starting, I think it's June 26th is what we read. Yeah. Uh, or 23rd. I can't remember, but... I think it was 23rd because they 23rd. get like a full week or something. Yeah, so they get a full week to discuss at least some terms with the teams, but they can't sign anything until July 1st. So he's going to want to kind of, you know, they're going to have to do a physical I- yeah, either way right. t- before a team's going to sign him, but um, you don't want to kind of play all your cards at once either. Right. I mean, he's got to make his money. So um, at least the Sharks would know at the extent of the injury mm-hmm. and if he's going to have surgery. But the thing is, like, for me, if he needs surgery, are the Sharks going to cover that because he's currently under contract with the Sharks? Right. And then they pay for the surgery and do the surgery and then he leaves? Mm-hmm. Or does he have the surgery later after he signs with another team and uses their doctor? You know? Because I, I bet teams are particular on what their own doctors versus yeah. other team doctors if they're going to sign them. Yeah, I think if, if you want the Sharks to pay for your reconstructed groin, then you sign with them. Otherwise, that, I'm not paying for a thing until which, I know you're my, my asset, right? Right, and that could be why he's putting off explaining what it is. Could be, yeah. Because he doesn't want... I don't know. He's just he's playing his cards close to his yeah. hand. Well, what I what I had heard was that, and I took a lot of flack for this because um, <laughs> I had said that you know it's probably the same groin injury, and and I had people on the lives as well as people on the set uh, telling me that no, it's uh, it could be the other the other side of his groin. I said okay, sure. Um, it turns out, according to Eric Carlson, that he reaggravated the original injury. I don't want Matt here to say I told you so or anything. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying this well, is yeah. what the injury was. The, the injury original, was the same one. The original side. Of of his groin. That's what he's saying. Yeah, is that it was the original and side he hurt the other side the s- when he came back. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. When he came back against was it Boston and he got burned by okay. Marchand, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I don't know what you're talking about cuz we were saying that he had a different groin, different side of the groin. That yeah, but what he's saying is that he he reaggravated the original injury, In the, the original. Playoffs, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, um that's I don't know. You know, there's a lot of times you hear guys telling you one thing, and it's kind of to block from yeah. what the real story is. Yeah. And uh, I'll get to Evander Kane in a moment here, but right. um, 
So it seems to be the case with, with Carlson right now. One way or the other, he's going to have a problem. Um, I, I don't want to say a problem between his legs, but he's got a problem in the groin area there. He's going to have it taken care of. Um, right. Hopefully everything goes well for him, whether or not he, is, he remains a Shark. Um, he's a phenomenal player, and you'd hate to see something like this ruin his career, regardless of where he plays. So um, if he does get re-signed by the Sharks, hey, great. I just hope that that groin injury is not going to be a problem going forward. And I'm sure he and the organization uh, would agree with that statement. But, you know, again, wherever he decides to go, uh, I just I hope that it, everything's okay for him right. and wish him the best. And he's hopefully fun to he's watch. The deal. He's fun to watch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Even if he's not on the Sharks, I wish him well because he's fun to watch and he's good. it's good for the league. Right. So um, I have no qualms if he left. Right. I'd be happy for him to stay. I'd be excited to have him stay. Yeah. Um, but speaking of groin injuries, another person had a groin injury, and it was Joe Thornton on his first shift <laughs> against the St. Louis Blues. That's brutal. But that kind of explains why he was both MIA on the score sheet yeah. for the most part, except for that one game, and why he got burned really bad right. by, uh, blanking on his name now. Bertuzzo. Bertuzzo. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Bertuzzo probably, maybe he knew that he was just not moving right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he was just like, oh, he's an old man, I'm going to blow by him. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, but Thornton Thornton was playing hurt. Um, but this season, he did say, and someone asked the question, you know, you, this is going to be the first summer that you're going to have where you can train without rehabbing. And that's a big deal because he's been rehabbing for three summers? Two yeah. summers? Three summers. I think three summers in a row he's right? had to rehab, yeah. Yeah, it's and he, he he said it's it's a brutal process. It's really it rough, is. and it it's you know you don't want to do it. You wake up in that day, and you just don't want to go do it. You it's know? mental. And it's more mental it than than physical because you you're so used to at, at that at that profession, right? The professional athlete, you're used to working hard and and getting better and seeing results pretty quickly. And when you have an injury like that, you're working as hard or harder than you yeah. always have. And you're not seeing the results right away. You're not seeing it. Frustrating. I mean, however, Shimmick, we can talk about Shimmick a oh, little yeah. bit. He has, he blew out his knee and he's been rehabbing and he's already on the ice, which is crazy. Awesome. I think he was on the ice this week. Um, he That's only about two months after surgery, which is so fast. I mean, skating is a little bit different than running. So you're not pounding your leg as much. And right. I'm sure it's very light skating. He's yeah. not doing any power skate or anything, but... Um, it's a good sign for him to, to get moving. He's young, so I think that helps. That takes yeah. a part of it. Um, but he's probably a very highly motivated guy to get back on the ice and, and back on the Sharks. So he's actually targeting to come back uh, for September. training camp, yeah. yeah, which is crazy. Because I was saying originally, most likely it's going to be he'll be ready by Thanksgiving, Christmas time, probably play in the Barracuda for a little bit, get a, get like a at least a couple weeks of yeah. those game speed up and then come into the NHL, but now it looks like I could be completely wrong mm -hmm. and he could be starting this season on the Sharks. Yeah, he said uh, he's ready to challenge. He's ready to fight for a spot uh, come come September. Mm -hmm. So um, really good news because, again, when Shimmick went out of the lineup, oh, it's not like he was the rock on the defense. I know a lot of people were trying to make that argument, and that's just not the case. Um, but he did help solidify... Uh, the rest of the defensive pairings. When you've got a guy that comes in and is able to play with Brent Burns and allow Brent Burns to do Brent Burns things because you've got a rock, uh, you know, playing alongside you on defense, a guy that's going to be hitting the body, who's reliable defensively, has a good stick, makes good reads. And then who are the other two you have left, right? It's Vlasic and Braun. So, yeah, I mean, Schimmick would be, would be great to have back. It's very promising to see that he's already on the road to recovery and he's going to be challenging for a spot in mm -hmm. September. So, uh, really great news on that front. So we'll see how many of those defensemen return. Obviously, we're talking about Eric Carlson in that scenario. So uh, maybe that does or does not work out depending on who gets resigned. But um, you know, for this season, again, that's kind of one of the things that threw a wrench uh, in the whole yeah. works. There, it's unfortunate. Yeah, and one guy that I thought was injured and was not was a Vander Kane. Amazingly, I I thought for sure it, something was up with him, and it's kind of disappointing that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. But you think that. There still was. Yeah, so I, there's this whole um, no excuses mentality that's through that locker room. And Joe Thornton, he said it himself. Look, I, you know, I had a groin injury, but it's not nothing compared to what everybody else was dealing with. And it's like, well, no, a groin is, you know, it, it hurts your skating ability, right? It, your ability to turn, your ability to push, um, do all the things that you need to do at an elite level. And so, if your groin is is you know a problem. And you're saying that it's not a big deal, and other guys are dealing with much more. Well, whatever Evander Kane's dealing with, he's probably going to say, "Yeah, it was no big deal." 
it's not, you know, there's nothing wrong. Oh, I was just slumping. Don't worry about it, you know. Especially, I mean, this guy looks up to Joe Thornton, you know. Slumping, so, though. Slumping, though, for it's the 10, wrong word. 11 games. It's the, that's what I'm saying. I, I, don't, I don't believe it. I'm sorry. I, I, Evander, if you're watching, which you're not, um, I, <laughs> I don't believe you. I'm sorry. I, there, there's something wrong. There was something wrong. I know that you're just trying to be, uh, you're trying to follow in Joe's footsteps and, and kind of downplaying it and just saying, you know, the whole no excuses thing. And I get that. And that's all well and good. And it's not an excuse to let people know what you're dealing with. But... I just feel like there was something else that was going on. He just doesn't want to say it. That's totally okay. But uh, you want to call it a slump? Okay. I mean, that's pretty long slump. It's but a bad slump. That's like the worst slump of the season for him. Right? At the worst time. Yeah, the worst that's why. Time. I'm just not buying it. I don't know. I, but, just, I feel like that's going to be fuel for the haters. That's the problem. <laughs> and I'm not talking about Sharks fans. I'm talking about Buffalo Sabres fans and okay. Olympic Jets fans and the, you know the teams they used to play for um, where he disappeared yeah. at times. And well, they're all just going to sit there and say, told you so. But he never had the chance to disappear in either of those uh, cities because they never went to the playoffs when he was because there. Because he disappeared? But he... All I'm saying is, in a big moment, they can't say that he disappears in big moments because they never had one. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Fair enough. Okay? Good. All right, good. Uh, Logan, however... Yes. Logan was out there, and he was saying that, you know, the, the guys that were playing... They were playing not hurt. They were playing injured. So I'm sure there's a lot of other things. We've only picked out right. a few of the big names. Well, let, let Logan could say it right here. We'll let Logan say it. Okay, there himself. you go. Here's the clip. There you go. The injuries took their toll. Um, we had guys that were playing that were were injured as well. Um, you know, they, they weren't hurt. They were they were injured. So every team has has injuries they're, they're dealing with. Unfortunately, we got uh, we got a bunch of our key guys that were were hurt injured so yeah there you go uh you know from logan to his mouth they're not hurt they were injured so. and that the way he says it though like just the way he presents himself yeah that, that's like a future captain right there talking i feel like you, you know? don't say right you don't believe that do you uh you know <laughs> just a little of course you do i, I whatever um but <laughs> that brings us to the re-signing yeah of current sharks uh there's three big names here yeah. One is the elephant in the room, I suppose. Uh, Eric Carlson. Is he going to resign or not? You know, everyone's going to want to know, and everyone's been asking him, and they've been asking him all season <laughs> long, the poor guy. <laughs> poor guy. I, I shouldn't say poor. Yeah. Um, he will not be. Right. <laughs> I have to get the Brinks trucks out for him. Um, but, but uh, I mean, I feel bad for him a little bit because that's all people want to talk about. Yeah. If it wasn't the first game back in Ottawa, it was how much money you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to sign? When are you going to sign? It's let him. I mean, he he made a good point of like he's earned that right to go to free agency. Right. It's the first time where he has control of where he can play because he got drafted and signed, traded. Right. He didn't get to choose where he got to go, so now he does. So, I for him career wise, good for him. Let him do what he wants. Yeah. I I have no problem with that. I I can really separate myself from. The personal side and the business side because I understand that it is a business. Right. I also understand individually those players need to do what's best for their families. Mm -hmm. uh, that and you know what's the difference between twelve million and ten million? That's still a lot of millions that I don't have. <laughs> but that, it's still like you got to take that into account. And you also got to take into account other factors outside of the the game, like where you live, where your kids can go to school, right. where they're going to grow up, where you know all these other kinds of factors. So. Um, and I'm not saying San Jose is a bad place for all that. It's just not the cheapest place for right. all that, yeah. which most of us know. But when you're making millions upon millions, you can afford to live in this area too. Oh so. yeah, I agree. I, I'm not saying that. Yeah. And just it's just there's a lot of things that go into play. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Okay. So that's Carlson one. Second one, Pavelski. Yeah. I think in the last the last live I said I don't think he's coming back. Um, it, it I always I've always said this. It's dependent on Carlson. If Carlson signs and he signs the max deal, what's eleven, twelve million dollars? I just don't know if they'll have enough money for Pavelski. Mm -hmm. um, but I now, after hearing the kind of locker room discussions, the the post clean out locker room discussions, sounds like Carlson is most likely not going to sign with the Sharks, and it sounds like Pavelski is going to sign wow. with the Sharks. And we'll hear it from the horse's mouth right here. Okay. Uh, no, it's not about dot in the eyes yet, uh, but <laughs> I just, you know, we love it here and really do and um, love playing here and I'm sure things will 
move along and we'll have talks and, and see where we're all at. Now, I don't know what you heard, but to me that sounds like that's a definite signing of Pavelski. He's going to stay here. Um, I, and I'm excited. Yeah. I like Pavelski. I just hope we don't spend too much. How about that? That's because fair. Because I just don't think he's going to ever score more than 38 goals. or get. He'll probably be, let's say he got 30, then like maybe 25, maybe 20. So he's just, we'll see like the Chichi where it just kind of, the train steady rails, decline. right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I love Pavelski. I love him on the team, but that also puts Couture back right. for the captaincy, mm-hmm. most likely, unless they take the captaincy away like they did to Marlowe and Thornton. So who knows? I don't know what's what they got up their sleeve. Yeah, I don't know that they're going to take the captaincy away from Joe Pavelski if they resign him because he they just went to the Western Conference Finals underneath him, right? Right. And uh, the way that he battled back from injury, you can say whatever you want about the call and everything else. The fact is the guy got knocked out for seven games, came back uh, after having taken a puck to the mouth and coming back in the same game. The guy's a warrior. Okay, so say whatever you want about him, but the dude's an absolute warrior. So I don't know that if he does get re-signed that they take the C away from him. So if your thought is that Logan Couture is the next captain, either he's going to have to wait a while or they're not signing Joe Pavelski back. I was the way I, that I'm going to see it. Now, um, again, when they're talking to the media, let's see what Eric Carlson had said to, to the media, right? What Eric Carlson had said was he likes everything that San Jose has to offer and he thinks they've done all the right things and everything else. So that, to me, sounds like he might want to sign here too. But um, I think that's kind of the lip service that you get with the media folks. So um, what Pavelski says to them in terms of, you know, I think it's going to get done, then, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe it does get done. But that could just be a lip service thing, too. Who knows, but right? I, I feel like he was a lot more direct. He didn't dance around the issue of like, oh, I don't know. We'll see how things yeah. play out. It was, no, I, I think we're going to, I think I'm going to come back. Right. I think it's going to happen. Right. I think it would be a huge letdown if he didn't now because okay. of the way he said that. To me, that just, that's like a confident, like, Sounds like to me like the agent and Doug yeah. Wilson have been talking, okay, at least. So it's probably now they're figuring out more of the details and everything else. And and, it, and again, speculation. Maybe he's saying that so that if he doesn't resign, the onus is on DW and not on him. That that the blame goes to, to to Wilson, right? I mean, who knows? Hey, I would love to see the captain come back. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, you know, again, kind of like stats. You can't take it for face value when they talk to the media and whatnot, but. Promising to hear him say that he he is interested in coming back because right. if he doesn't come back, then that's probably not his decision that he didn't want to come back. It's right. probably you know DW. So um, that, there's that. Yeah, and that brings us to our next shark, who is Jumbo. Jumbo. <laughs> I had to check the board there. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, uh, uh, Jumbo kind of came out and said, "Well, he didn't say who was coming back." Yeah, that's the big question for Jumbo. So Carlson, where are you going to sign Pavelski? Are you going to sign? <laughs> Jumbo, are you going to play again? Yeah. And where? And Jumbo came out and he said that he was basically, I'm a shark. Yeah. And this is a great, great clip here. And we'll, we'll see that clip right now. Yeah. Joe, the situation it seemed last year, you know, it's just if you want to come back, Doug finds a way to get you on this yeah. team. And, and, and is it safe to say that if you do come back, it won't be anywhere else? Yeah. Before? Yeah. It is safe to say. It's, you know, I'm a shark. Yeah. I'm a shark. And, you know, there's, yeah. There's one team, and it's here. Yeah. So Jumbo basically saying, you know, he feels he's got more in him, right? He's got mm-hmm. some more years, or maybe a more year. He's got a little more hockey, at least, in him. Uh, and that if he does resign, it's going to be with the Sharks. He's not going to – if he's going to retire, he's going to retire. If he's not going to retire, he's coming back in teal. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure he'll sign a ridiculously team-friendly deal to make that happen. Obviously, you know, you saw the team that Doug Wilson was able to put together, and you see that – you know, if Jumbo wants to come back, you know he's going to have to take a little bit less because the guys that are going to have to resign, the cap space is going to you know get um, get pretty filled up pretty fast. And to be that competitive again, they're going to have to bring in some pretty big name players, assuming one or two or three maybe of the guys that they had yeah. signed to make it that deep of a roster won't be able to come back. So I feel like Jumbo probably will come back for another year. He's I coming mean, back in teal and he he's probably going to do that. Points. Yeah, right. he, it, imagine getting a fifty-point third-line guy yeah. <laughs> off the free agent list, right? Like they they don't grow on trees, people. For a third-line center, a fifty-point third-line center, yeah. who did not get a chance to do training in the offseason right. and is now going to be able to. So I do think training. I think next season he so. could get another fifty points. And I know in the last episode or the last the last live, I was like, 
after what I've seen, I don't think <laughs> I didn't know he was playing with the but groin that's injury. Why. Exactly, he's playing with the groin injury, so that makes sense. Um, so now I feel more confident that he would be back another year. I think he can play another year, yeah. going into the season fully healthy of training all summer long, uh, and not rehab training, but mm -hmm. actual training. So I, I could see Jumbo coming back, and I could see another fifty points out of him, mm -hmm. and we're going to just see him keep getting more milestone after milestone and <laughs> Kane rolling his eyes about it. I cannot wait for yeah. that. Now, another guy that, speaking of team-friendly deals or potential team-friendly deals, Timo Meyer, um, he's up for, and he's an RFA, but he's up to get his contract renewed there. Uh, it sounded like Doug Wilson was hinting that uh, Timo might be getting a bridge deal right. uh, because, you know, trying to keep the team together and everything. And I guess he had talked with his agent and Timo understands how uh, the players get treated and that they'll treat him well. So it sounds like they're going to give Timo a, a bridge deal. You were saying probably maybe like three to four years. I I'm, feel maybe I'm like three. You think three? Yeah. I was thinking more like the two year realm. So probably in that two, three years is probably what we're thinking of there. So, um, Hey, that'd be great if we can get Timo Meyer at a team friendly deal. Probably in the how much do you think in the four million range somewhere in there? Somewhere between four and five. Somewhere I think in there would be fair. That's and, fair. Yeah, guy has like thirty goal scorer, right? So, right. I mean, yeah, I, I would take Timo at a good four or five million a year. That'd be great. So, and especially you know, guy's young. He's gonna uh, grow up essentially in this organization and whatnot. So, um, he's only gonna get better. Mm -hmm. He hasn't quite hit his prime yet. He is a, a force to be reckoned with, and he's only gonna get better. So, yeah, uh, being able to get a bridge deal with him uh, would be great. Salary cap increases by the time that his contract is ready to be renewed, right. and then you pay him the good money that he's actually worth. Well, we have the actual clip of Doug Wilson hinting at the bridge deal. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and play that right now. It's part of the system. Uh, you know, we historically have had uh, players that have benefited playing with really good players that uh, understand uh, to keep a group together. Uh, you know, we've done bridge contracts. Uh, I've had conversations with his agent, and, and Timo certainly understands how everybody's been treated, and, and we'll treat them well. Um, keeping everybody together is is a challenge of our cap system, but I think that's one of the reasons why we're so loyal to our own players and young guys that have come up through the system is uh, they know how we try to treat them. So everything that I had just talked about in, in a clip. So right. there you go. Yeah. Uh, thank you for reminding me about the clip. Appreciate that. Sure. All right. So uh, now that we've kind of talked about all that stuff, we're going to go ahead and get to the whole giveaway portion. This is where uh, pretty much everything on the set that you see here, uh, minus the Donskoy stick, because that's Joe's. You're not allowed to touch that. <laughs> uh, and the Fin Factor thing here in the picture. Uh, pretty much everything else, though, we are going to be giving away. Um, so I think you've got some more details on on the how, right? So there's the shirts and what. You want to do the shirts first? How do you want to do sure, this? Sure, we'll do okay. we'll do all the stuff that's hanging up in the background right now that, that we're gonna do. So um, we'll start over here on the left. The playoff mode sweatshirt. It's a medium playoff mode sweatshirt. And if you'd like that, in the comments, put hashtag sweatshirt. And by the way, sorry, I just want to interview real quick. Um, for all of these things, if you put hashtag everything up here, right? If you win one of them, it eliminates you from everything else. So if I were you, I would choose the one or two things that you really do want because if you say you want you know, a, a kid's shirt and you win the kid's shirt, you're not gonna be able to win the sweatshirt, the hooded sweatshirt that maybe you want more, right? So at your own risk, right? right. Put as many hashtags as you like, but if you win something, then you're out of everything else. Cool? Right. Cool. Yep. All right. All right, now moving next is the Burnsy shirt. And that is really? an extra large. So just to let you know, it's an extra large. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be Burnsy, hashtag Burnsy shirt. One word. Burnsy shirt? Burnsy shirt, because okay. it says Burnsy on it. All right, so Burnsy, Burnsy shirt. shirt. Uh, and then right here, there's the playoff mode kids shirt, and it's a size 6, 7. And that's going to be hashtag kids shirt. Okay. And then moving over here is the women's medium playoff mode shirt, and that's going to be hashtag women's shirt. And behind me here is the Carlson. This is a double extra large, and that's going to be hashtag Carlson shirt. And the Logan Couture is also a double extra large, so that'll be hashtag Couture shirt. Okay. Very good. So uh, go ahead and make a comment that has those hashtags. If you want to put something more than just the hashtag, if you want to actually uh, contribute to the comment section there and give us maybe <laughs> a question or a comment or uh, anything else, that'd be great. Uh, but then go ahead and put your hashtags in there. Again, you can put multiple hashtags, but if you win something, it eliminates you from all of the rest. So 
uh, there is that. Now, the rest of the stuff that you see on here, I think, I don't know what we're going to do with those playoff mode boxes. Just you can give those away, too. We're going to give them during the, 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 the walk-ups, the meetups. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have like a meetup uh, with you guys. So because the baubles are a little bit bigger and they're kind of harder for us to ship uh, in terms of the shipping costs and everything, yeah, obviously, break either. we are still poor. We yeah. appreciate all <laughs> the monetary uh, help that we've been getting from you guys in the Super Chats and uh, getting all the gear and everything else. But uh, yeah, yeah we st we, this is it's too much to ship all this stuff. So <laughs> Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have meetups that are announced. Now, maybe one different place or, you know, two different places. Or I am only may only have a small uh, group of baubles or I may bring them. I don't know yet. But um, basically, what I'll do is I'll put it out on Twitter, right? I think Twitter is the one that we're going to aim for, yeah. not, not all of them. Right. So um, uh, Instagram is at FinFactor, but we're not going to put it there. Uh, we're going to put it on uh, Twitter. So it's at the FinFactor for Twitter. So follow that, uh, follow us on Twitter, and I will let you guys know when I'm going to be uh, out in a certain area, and or maybe both of us, I don't know. And maybe, we'll meet up with yeah. you guys, uh, and sh the first It'll however many people. Like a lunchtime thing. Yeah, probably right? lunchtime would yeah. be great, maybe like noonish or whatever. Mm -hmm. But basically, we'll have you guys meet up with us, and uh, the first however many people that show up that have, you know, we have however many baubles at that point in time, just go ahead and uh, you'll be able to pick one. So uh, that's what we'll do. Now, I did want to point out the ones that we're giving away here. It is the, again, we have people on the podcast. So we have the Evander King with Penelope. We have the 2016-17 Martin Jones. We have the Beast Mode Marshawn Lynch. The Shirtless Jumbo, which is awesome. We have, actually, we have a few of the Game of Jones, I think, that we can give away as well. Um, we have the, gosh, what is that one? The Guardians of the Net, the Guardians Marvel, the, net. Yeah. the Marvel one Crossover. for the Jones there, yeah. Uh, then we've got the Dawnfather, and we have, I think, two of the Hurdle uh, Holiday Suit ones as well. So for all of these baubles, what we're going to do is we're going to do, again, a meetup. Follow us on Twitter, at the Fin Factor, and we will be sending out a tweet that lets you guys know, uh, hopefully with enough advance notice, uh, where to go and when to go there. And it'll probably be, again, like a lunchtime thing. So uh, bring your appetite, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, we're not paying for you, but bring your appetite. <laughs> um, so yeah, then we meet up uh, with Aaron and myself or one or the other and pick up a bobble along the way. Now, we'll also be doing, I guess, these playoff mode boxes. We have four of them. We have four of these playoff yeah. mode boxes. Now, they have, I think this is actually from inside one of the boxes, so we'll have to put that back. But uh, they have a bunch of stuff in there, like a teal uh, light bulb, and uh, there's a big sticker kind of thing that they had, these little towels that they had going it's on, too. a glass decal for the back of your car. Which is cool. Yeah. Really, really so cool. So it's clear. Yeah. So if, you, uh, if you've if you known what was in the boxes already, it's basically that. If you don't know what's inside the box, I'm sure they have like a, uh, something on the website where you can Hashtag, tell what's it. in the box? <laughs> there you go. So, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and, and add those to the, uh, the list of things that we'll be giving away. Kind of like a turn up and teal event, except it's like turn up for the Fin Factor event. I don't know. So, yeah, why not? Anyway, is there anything else that we're going to be doing in terms of the giveaways on this? I know we're going to be doing... That's it. We're, we're going to save that for something else. We're going to save this for something else. But again, subscribe to the Fin Factor. Yeah. Okay, so uh, hit that sub button and turn the notifications on because we are going to give away this signed Joe Thornton puck. It's the, uh, the puck that's got two sides. 500 uh, goals for Patrick Marlowe on one side and the 1,000 assists for Jumbo. Again, this is an older puck. He's gone past, like, what, 1,500 now or yeah. some, some ridiculous amount. I don't know. Anyway, um, so this one here, this is signed. Uh, again, thanks to Hero from the uh, Shark Spread Discord for getting us the puck. And then I went and got it signed, and I promised that I would give it away. So I am keeping that promise. So um, I don't know exactly what we're doing for this one. Stay tuned. Get subscribed. Next video out, we'll probably have the information for you mm -hmm. guys. Cool? Yep. All right. Uh, we are also working on, not no promises yet, but we're looking to get sweatshirts made for yeah. the Fin Factor swag. And possibly polos, if you're interested in polos. We've had a lot of people ask about these polos. Um, but <laughs> Do anyway. Do you want to tell the story from the other night? The uh, oh. So uh, <laughs> I, we, we put it up on Instagram that three of us, uh, Aaron, myself, and Super Producer Jason, we went off to uh, one of the local bars to have a celebratory drink uh, for our last live show. Yep. And uh, a gentleman came to the bar, didn't know who we were, saw the polos and said, you know, how much? Yeah. <laughs> he had no idea what it was about, but he wanted the polo. He was trying to buy it literally off of our back. Literally. And I was like, well, what am I going to wear? He's like, I'll give you a shirt. No. The one off of his back. Right. Which did yeah. not sweeten the deal no. <laughs> at all. But so anyway, uh, you know, if, if that's something that you guys may be interested in, 
uh, perhaps we take a look at doing polls or something for yeah. you guys as well. But we may have to do like a pre-order thing again. We hold inventory, so it might be easier for us to, uh, you know, get a pre-order yeah. thing, get it, figure out how many people actually want them before we uh, before we pull the trigger on that. So, but we are doing a we have swag in our store, and it's mm -hmm. thefinfactor.com, and we'll put it down here, and we're gonna run the playoff mode. Um, or the 10% coupon for right. playoff mode through Sunday, this upcoming Sunday. So you only have a couple more days left to get 10% off. Uh, so go ahead and jump in that store and get your swag. Because unfortunately, despite all of the things saying playoff mode on, playoff mode is off. Playoff mode is off for the Sharks, sadly. Yes. Oh, well. Gosh, I think... Uh, Episode 48 might be off right about now, too. Are we, <laughs> yeah. uh, we all in? I think it's it. Okay, so again, visit that store. We have other things, uh, you know, the, the shirts, right? We've got black shirts, uh, teal shirts, gray shirts. We have the women's V-cut, kind of like this one, actually. I think it's the same actual shirt, but it's yeah. just, you know, with Fin Factor logo mm -hmm. on it. Uh, hats and stickers. The hats are phenomenal, by the way. Uh, so go ahead, go ahead and visit the store. Give them a look. Again, 10% off only until Sunday. So take advantage of that while you can. Okay, anything else? We're good to go? Good to All go. right, great. Hey, guys, again, thank you so much for uh, for watching us and, and tuning in throughout the season. We'll have one more episode out that kind of wraps up the season, not for the Sharks, but for the Fin Factor. Uh, I think it'll be a pretty interesting episode. And uh, gosh, I've just had so much fun doing this. And I, I can't wait for season two just to, to come along. Season two for us, obviously. Yeah. And uh, ah, it's amazing how much we grew in it, one season. It, one truly, year. Less than a year, really. Truly. Less than a calendar year. It's been absolutely amazing. And again, doing all those live shows, I'm going to miss doing them. Again, we sat down to do another recorded show, and it, <laughs> it feels weird, right? We're, yeah. we're used to doing the lives with you guys now. So uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll have to work in some more live content uh, throughout the regular season uh, and during season two. But we'll see how that goes. In any case, uh, once again, thank you guys for tuning in. We hope you do subscribe. And I guess we'll see you guys maybe next week. Maybe next week, I guess. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who knows? All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.